We're going to attempt a concise definition of Marxism. Marxism, of course, is the brainchild of Karl Marx, a time known as the Industrial Revolution. And uh, Marx devoted himself to writing this work called Das Kapital, meaning the capital. And of course, in it, he delineates the way we ought to construct society in order to produce the most happiness for the most individuals. And this, of course, is communism, and he's known as the father of communism. All right, so let's look at what motivated him. He lived during this Industrial Revolution in which um, goods were being produced at a phenomenal rate. But the cost was being borne by the masses of poor people, and many children had to even work long and arduous hours in dangerous conditions uh, rather than being in school. And uh, Marx thought, well, uh, all this uh, production of goods is wonderful, but the effect is, uh, you know, deplorable. So how, how can we remedy this kind of injustice? Well, it's important to note that Marx saw the world as a machine. He was a materialist. And as such, he says every effect has a cause in life, in the world, uh, and we should be able to manipulate these causes to whatever effect we want. Well, as it pertains to human behavior, many of his contemporaries at the time had argued well, you can never apply those kinds of strict um, materialistic laws to humans because humans have this ability to make choices. And so the volitional nature of, of that ability means that you'll never be able to fully predict human behavior. So Marx argues, well, that may be the case for individuals. As a group, human behavior can be explained with determined scientific laws in much the same way that we can explain the behavioral patterns of a, a herd of wildebeest. We know exactly what they're going to do every year. Maybe not an individual wildebeest, but as a group, we know what they are going to do. Well, Marx sees economics as that which basically drives everything. The system used within any group of people to trade the stuff they need to survive in life. In other words, what he's saying is our most basic motivation in life is things that we need to obtain to survive, food, water, shelter, etc. And that it's that drive that is behind all the other complex expressions of human life within a culture at the very bottom it's all sprouting up out of the fertile ground of economics. So whether we're talking about the religious expressions of a culture, the legal system, the educational system, the entertainment system, all these things evolve in a way out of the economics and if they don't support or if, they, or if they don't in some way reflect the economic system, then they tend to fade away. They don't survive. Well, Marx says the, the sad thing is that in nature, power always tends to distill into fewer and fewer hands. 
So when we say power, we mean money, the economics. That's where power really lies. It keeps distilling into fewer and fewer hands. And so what you have is a growing population of poor and working people that he refers to as the class of proletariat, wanting to break through into that realm where the rich and comfortable live, that class he refers to as the bourgeoisie. And that this pattern is inevitable in all societies, that there will be a class struggle between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat unless we do something to put an end to it, unless we do something to interrupt the process. And of course, for Marx, that is communism. Well, whether or not uh, that really works out, that is something for another video, of course, that we have available for you in the library. But that is a basic, broad definition of Marxism. Please join us at Philosophers 101 by clicking on the link below. And there you'll have the opportunity to put your name and email in and join us to get access to all the videos available in the video library.